Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today, you're talking again on the JP side of the game. I wanted to talk about the Part 2 units that just came out, kind of go over what their kit is and see if I'm going to be saving at all. I mainly play the NA version of the game, but I do like to look at the JP side of the game, kind of see if I need to plan two years ahead of what I'm going to be summoning. As such, I haven't shown them here, and I think in the actual thumbnail, I'm going to do my best to put them in silhouette form or something. But I think the silhouette gives them away as well. Maybe I'll just put a giant question mark. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I am going to be talking about units that will technically be spoilers for the story. So if you don't, if you care about that, I suggest you stop watching the video and come back here in two years. If you somehow are able to, or at some point if someone ruins the story for you, because I'm going to save right now, chances are the you'll know their names by about a month from now. So, but if you want to keep that, and if you want to try your best to not know their names in two years' time, then feel free to leave the video and come back in two years when you're ready for the story stuff, so. Gonna give you some time. Goodbye. See you guys next time. Make sure to leave a like as you're leaving, <laughs> at least. Just kidding. Alright, let's get into the video. Alright, so. The new units are, of course, uh, James Moriarty Ruler, Don Quixote. And Zheng Jing. I'm not going to get into actual story things about what's going on with James Moriarty because it's apparently a lot. And as such, I'm not actually going to be looking at any of his lore info. But thank God you don't need to look at lore info when all you need to know is what does the unit do. So he is a ruler. He is a five star. And he has, and I will not take the survey. Thank you very much. He has one quick card, three arts cards, and one buster. His active skills. His first one is called Mathematical Thinking. Grants self-evasion for two attacks, three turns. Ignores evasion for three turns, reduces all enemies' arch resistance for three turns, and then reduces the arch resistance of enemies with evil alignment for three turns. 20% and then 20% additional full evil arch uh, resistance. Alright. Interesting. Second skill, unlocks after first ascension, increases on quick performance for three turns, increases on... The, the, the quick is actively useless. He only has one quick card. Increases his own arts performance for three turns. Increases his own again. That's all. The Buster performance is also useless. <laughs> Increase own crest to critical damage for three turns. Thirty percent. Thirty percent. Thirty percent. Thirty percent. Um, this skill would be really good in turn six. That's not too bad. This skill would be really good um, if it was actually just arts focused. I hate it when they do this. I think they do it to balance out units, but this skill is actively useless on a unit that has three arts cards. Like. Who cares if for three turns his one quick card and his one buster is slightly stronger. It just doesn't make any sense. I think they could have better balanced it in another way. Especially because he is a ruler, he's a five star, and he has, he's story locked, I think. He's a limited servant, so whatever, go crazy with him. Rulers already have sometimes a problem with damage because they usually aren't on the, um, the side of advantage. So whatever bonus you can give him, I say give it to him. But anyway, third skill. Dice Selection EX, Charger Zone NP Gauge, grants one random buff for two effects, only one can be activated. Increases Zone Crit Star, Star Absorption of Arts Cards by 100%, for one turn, wait 50%, <laughs> wow, this ability has a 50% chance to be completely useless. Increases Zone Critical Star Absorption of Buster Cards for 500% for one turn, gain Crit Stars. 20 Crit Stars and 50% NP, that's a nice ability. Well, thankfully, Crit Star Absorption isn't... The world's greatest ability so it doesn't really matter too much if this sucks or isn't the greatest putting a f like i said if he had maybe two buster cards i would understand it but he literally has one buster card the chances of you activating this and getting the right one are just not possible especially because this lasts for one turn it's dumb but 20 quit stars is pretty nice so i get i bet they're hoping whenever you use this you're gonna be pretty well off but anyway Passive skills, independent action A, increase on crit damage by 10%, pretty nice. Conspiracy creation EX, increases on arts performance for by 5%, increases on MP damage by 5%, pretty nice. Panic cut C+, plus, grant, wow, grant self charm debuff immunity, grant self confusion debuff immunity, grant self terror debuff immunity, grant self skill, skill debuff immunity, that's insane. For a C+, plus? what the hell is B? Oh, to be fair, a C plus is better than B, because of the way fate works, which is really weird. If you didn't know this, actually, I, I learned that a very, apparently very recently, is that uh, a C and a B, obviously the B is better, but a C plus and a B, 
The plus on a C means that under certain conditions, it outperforms the ability of a B. So if you ever wondered why some characters have like crazy pluses on it, it usually means that that means that they can do better than the rank above them. I know EX was supposed to be like, it doesn't mean that it's the best. It just means that it's not, um, just, I forget the exact wording of it, but it's just like hard to gauge exactly, which is why the ability is EX. But I digress. This is all very nice. Append skills. Uh, unlocks, con unlocks by consuming servant coins, extra attack, finesse improvements. Starts NP gauge. I'm curious on attack against rulers because uh, Sherlock is a ruler, so why not? Noble phantasms, mathematical malignant annihilation, extraction, and mathematical evil ways. Four hits per hit percentage. Deals damage to all enemies. Deals 150% extra damage against specifically good alignment. Seals their skills for one turn, inflicts evil alignment for three turns to them, increases NP damage for one turn. The damage is also 450% in MP level one. If you somehow get him to five, it's 750%. And the increase to MP damage for one turn is 20% at a 100% charge and 40% at a 500% charge. So, uh, initial look at him. I think he looks pretty damn solid to be 100% real with you. There's not a lot of, like, a Ruler's a weird class for a lot of reasons, especially in this instance, because for the most part, you would want an AoE arts unit to kind of be used for um, farming, for the most part. And most of the time, you want to use a Ruler um, because you're in some kind of challenge quest. <laughs> but I'm going to assume there's going to be some challenge quest where he's going to be... He's actually super well built for them because of how much he's immune... If you want to know why I'm so giddy on this one, where he grants himself charm deep immunity, is that it's because I remember the shoot-in fight from um, Samosa or Shimosa or whatever you, or however you pronounce it, where it was a constant charm debuff everything. Like all the stuff that he's immune to is kind of crazy because it's all the stuff that a lot of bosses will just randomly give you, and to remove the randomness from it is very nice. So the only thing that's kind of a not a bummer for challenge quest because it kind of depends on the challenge quest is that it is an aoe but he also just deals so much damage if they're from the good alignment and most servants you're going to be fighting are from the good alignment and even if they are evil that just means that you can use this first skill right away and get some resistance it's not the same as 150 percent, but it's still pretty good the only real negative i have for him is his second skill and also that his arts card only seems to hit four hits which if you don't know this, the more hits on an arts card, the better it is for NP gain. So I don't actually know if you could potentially loop with him, but I think you could potentially do a lot of damage for sure. This second skill, again, I think that the quick and the arts, the buster thing is just... that this Just replace it with something else. If not this, give MP damage. Give literally anything but quick and buster <laughs> up. Especially because, like, look at the third skill. The crit weight is increased on the buster cards. Not the quick cards. This is actively useless, but whatever. It's fine. He's pretty good to me. I like what they got going there. So James Moriarty. Next, this is someone I actually really want, and I actually am going to have to summon for this because he's story locked. If you don't know what story locked is, story locked is a lot like regular limited, except for 10 times more annoying because you never get them because they're always on story banner and you never summon on story banner because story banner sucks ass. This is Don Quixote, along with uh, Sancho over here, which I also think is the combination of Rosa, Rosalina, is that what her name is? And I think maybe Dulcinea as well, if I were to guess, unless they decide to just gender bent Sancho, which would be, but also his horse as well, because she's a horse, but anyway enough horsing around don quixote i love don quixote so let's go into it active skill let's hope he's good so he has two quick cards one arts cards two buster all right the great adventure of the traveling knight ex increases on quick performance for three turns increases on buster performance for three turns grant self uh, gut status for three turns 20 percent, 20 percent, and guts not the greatest but okay Opening the door, Fantasy EX increases on attack for three turns, charges on NP gauge every turn for three turns, gains crit stars every, for every turn for three turns, attack, NP regen, star regen, 10 regen, NP regen is 10, attack is 20%, okay. Third skill, closing the curtain of reality E, ooh, okay. Can only be used when the NP gauge is 30% or higher. 
500% chance to reduce own MP gauge to zero. Demerit. Charges party's MP gauge except self. Gains crit stars. 30% MP and 20, 20 stars, huh? Hmm. Let's go and I'll fool through the rest of what he does. Passive skills, magic resistance E, writing E, traveling attendant B, which is increase OMD buff resistance by 10%, increase on quick performance by 2%. And increase own insta kill resistance by 20%. Alright, that's pretty good. Uh, very situational when you would ever would need this, but there are some situations where you want some instant kill resistance. BB is very good because she has, I think, 100% insta kill um, resistance. The pen skills um, extra tenac, MP gauge, and own attack against riders. Okay, Noble Phantasm, D. Valiente Estolo dedicado a la princesa. Ah, my dear princess, I shall dedicate my spear to you. Anti giant. <laughs> deal damage to one enemy, deals 150% extra damage against giant enemies, 500% chance to deal 1000 damage to self, increases on party's attack by 20% for three turns. NP damage is wow, 1200% at level 1, 2000 at level 5. The increase to the crit damage for the party team is 20% and 60% at 500% charge. So, um, hmm, hmm, this ability here where he, this, I don't know why they did this, the, why didn't they just give him a, oh, it's a five turn cooldown? That's silly. I don't really see the, I don't really know, I don't fully see. Can only be used when the MP gauge is 30% or higher. Okay, so it's not as bad as because Brave Liz has an ability like this, but it's random and you I think need all NP gauge basically. I think you need 100% NP gauge, so that's all right. Um, charging party percent MP gauge 30% is pretty nice, but crit stars 20 that's not that's not the most. I actually think he's probably better off as a supporting role in a challenge quest of some kind. A very specific challenge quest that kind of needs insta kill as its main gimmick, so you would have a reason to need the resistance. Because um, actually, the like the abilities to like gain crit stars and do all that other stuff is better for units who are in like a challenging situation. Because in a regular fight, you very rarely are ever gonna need it. But in those specific instances, is pretty nice. So probably not the best unit. Probably a major skip for most units, I would say. But I like Don Quixote, so I would find ways to make him usable in that situation that I created in my head there. Kind of a shame, but I don't know. Still very cool looking unit. Still kind of want him as well, even reading that. And finally, the last guy, Zhang Yu. Zhang Yu. Active skills. General of Heaven B minus. Oh, wait. Two quick cards, two arts, one buster. Increases party's quick performance for three turns. And uh, party's arc performance for three turns, 20%, 20%, okay. Great teacher A increases one ally's crit star absorption for one turn, increases their crit damage for one turn, removes their debuffs, 200% absorption, 100% crit damage is pretty nice. Way of taping EX, charges on NP gauge, 80% chance to grant some. <laughs> Only to himself, 80% chance to grant the forest battlefield, the water side battlefield, sunlight battlefield, and the burning battlefield. Uh, how much is he charges is on it? 50% NP charge on a 3 star, okay. Territory creation B, increase on arts performance by 8%. Item construction B, um, increases on debuff to success rate by 8%. Append skills, extra attack, oops. Anti-caster basically is what he's got here, even though he is caster himself. Sure, why not? And his noble phantasm, uh, the azure sky is already dead. The yellow sky will soon rise because he's, I think, the guy who was behind the yellow turban rebellion. Five hits, quick, reduces all enemies' quick resistance by 20% on a forced battlefield for three turns. Arts, the water side battlefield. <laughs> The Buster Resistance, Sunlight Battlefield, and Crit Attack Chance, the Burning Battlefield, and then deals damage to them. 600% at level 1, and then all the way to 1000. Increase on NP damage for one turn. Charge 100%, it's 10%, and level 5 is 500%, it's 30%. This guy seems, uh, funny. <laughs> the ability to summon the battlefield is actually pretty nice. It's kind of a shame that they put it on an 80% chance, because if this was just a 100% chance, 
I think he'd have some hilarious utility to him, actually. Um, I actually think probably he would be better off if this ability wasn't an attack ability and it was more a buff. If he buffed, like, if it was a debuff to the enemy and then maybe also dealt some. Because I really feel like the most thing that you want from this is the resistance here. The resistance and the crit attack thing and then the ability to probably keep on doing that. But, hmm... You know, as far as most, he's not limited, he's not story locked, he's just a 3 star that you'll always get, so there might be in the future something worth having with him. And funny enough, if you are ever actually on one of these battlefields, it actually is kind of nice to have the resistance. The main problem is, is that you probably wouldn't be able to use that very much, and just having a resistance on your NP of all things is not the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> Because uh, as we've seen here, um, Moriarty has an arch resistance and it's just on his skill. And all he needs is an evil alignment and it's just 20% and it's pretty easy. And then, in general, he'll also give 20% art resistance and that's pretty easy. So, in theory, he's doing 40% for 3 turns on the skill 1 under the right conditions that are easier to actually achieve because he gives evil alignment to the enemies on his NP, so you could set it up, do it next turn, and then boom. In theory, but this one here, it's a little bit tougher, I think. So yeah, probably not the greatest three-star in the world compared, because there are plenty of three-stars that are amazing. This guy doesn't really scream that to me, but he does seem pretty funny with this ability here. And again, this second skill, actually, if he gave NP, it'd be fantastic. But he seems to just kind of be setting up one person to do a lot of crit damage one turn. So probably for, again, probably something gimmicky, but still, gimmicks can be fun. So yeah, those are the three units that are coming in part two. Uh, am I going to be saving for them is the answer is the question, though. The answer is, like, I think so. I kind of like Moriarty as a person, and I kind of always feel bad that I don't have the Archer version, even though I don't super go hard for him whenever he shows up. Um, whenever I do GSSR, he's always one of the ones where I'm like, yeah, if I get him, that'd be pretty nice. Mainly because he has a lot of lore stuff that's always nice to read about. Um, <laughs> at least the old man version does, obviously. Moriarty has his own things. Uh, but yeah, they're probably the... Don Quixote and Zong is not... If you're someone who's looking for like the cream of the crop best, I think you're basically only summoning on this for Moriarty, chances are. And Don Quixote and Zhang Zhu is just someone who can be... It'd be like a nice bonus you can get, but I don't really see a reason to go chasing Don Quixote, which is kind of a shame because uh, Lancer four stars who have quick, I think he has a quick, unless I'm wrong, if someone can show me him putting in a lot of work, please let me know, because that would be awesome, and I would gladly rescind everything and go like, oh, actually, he's sick, but for the most part, it looks like you just kind of want to fight him against giant enemies, and that's it, and he's a quick unit with some support stuff and not the greatest in terms of buffing himself up all that much. He's better at buffing the the team, it looks like, than anything with this ability, but even then, it's not... Yeah, it's a little bit like I'm a little A on it, but if you can show me something of him being super powerful, that'd be great, because uh, I really do like him. But the point I was trying to make is that just because he's a four-star doesn't mean that he can be bad. Some of the best Lancers in the game are four-stars, <laughs> at least in terms of uh, farming-wise, because... Parvati is amazing, and then so are the Valkyries, which are somewhere here. I think the Valkyries are here. Yeah, right here. Some great stuff here. And some other four Lancers. Yeah, like Raiko, fantastic four star, for various reasons. Theon, a fantastic four star. So it's not like that's out of the realm of possibility. It just seems like they didn't want to do it for Don Quixote. Oh yeah, Mysterious Alter Ego. Fantastic for uh, Funny enough, all the best <laughs> Lancers uh, for four are great at looping. <laughs> now that I've looked at it like this. That's funny how that turns out like that. So, before I go any further, because there's a spoiler down there, I probably will probably do some saving and think about it. If anything, I'm probably going to end up skipping... Oh, actually, Grimhold is also story locked. That's annoying. I'll, I'll see how I feel in two years from now. But for right now... I would probably end up skipping part one to see if I can get some Moriarty, and that's about it. But, and chances are this is probably going to be crit. But would I do the full pity for Moriarty? Right now my heart is telling me no, because I think there's going to be something much bigger coming up in the horizon, especially with Anniversary, and a lot of these units have been quick. 
So that makes me feel like it might be time for the quick buff be coming in. It's been two years since... Funny enough, in NA, we're still in the knee-deep in the quick era until Castoria comes out. And then quick is effectively not dead, but it's now... <laughs> it's not as dead as Buster. I'll say that much. Because Buster gets absolutely destroyed <laughs> until a year later when they get their supports. Because uh, Merlin's just trying to do his absolute best as, and perhaps not living up to it in some cases. But anyway, I'll see. Kind of look forward to the future. Before this is a lot of, I think it's Super Bunyan, so I think I'm all hands on deck for Super Bunyan. So we'll kind of see what's kind of come up in the future. Some stuff has been kind of coming out for the Lost Belt, and Lost Belt 7 in particular seems to be set in a uh, potential Aztec underworld. Maybe. Is from what I've the the rumors are going from what I hear. So if that's the case, small chance is always. I like how both of my videos for, for Go have been back to back going maybe quits, but I don't know. That's what I'm feeling. But that anyway. Thank you very much for watching the video. That's the end of it. Tell me how if you're gonna be doing. If you're on JP, if you summoned for him already, tell me how you did, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Have a good day. Have a good night. Bye bye.